Hi, my name is Josh Bashinsky, and welcome to another session of Mastering Google SEO for 2012. Today's topic is negative SEO. It's a very popular topic, talked about online right now. And today we're going to talk about what is it exactly, what tactics are generally used. I'm going to share some of the tactics that I know of that are used. Definitely not all of them, but some of them. And two, more importantly, how do we protect against it? Now that some people say Google has opened the door for negative SEO to be more, po more possible, if that is the case, we have to learn how to mitigate that risk and protect our websites against it. So let's look deeper into negative SEO. Okay, so first let's talk about what is negative SEO. Negative SEO is the process of de-ranking sites. Uh, it's the opposite of SEO, which tries to rank sites higher. Negative SEO tries to de-rank competitor sites. And so what are some of the tactics that people use? Well, before we get into the tactics, I should offer a little disclaimer. Uh, obviously, I'm providing this information for academic purposes only. I neither endorse nor support any illegal activity of any kind whatsoever, and uh, I'm only providing this for theoretical knowledge. Okay, so with that in mind, let's look at the tactics that some people reportedly use. The first one is a paid link report. This one is actually very simple. Let's say your, client, uh, let's say your uh, competitors have been somewhat lazy in their SEO. They've got some bad links put on themselves. They've got links that look like paid links. They have links that are from free link or SEO link or paid link or obvious linking directories. Uh, Google can track all these semantics and they can, are pretty good at guessing when there's a paid link or not, uh, or a link from a, a, just a general linking site. So all you have to do, if, or also if they have some uh, overly optimized backlink anchor text, which we'll talk about in a second. So all you have to do is very simple, is go to Google and submit a paid link report. I've personally seen a number of sites getting taken down because of this. The next is, number two, spam link on their SEO keywords. So let's say, for example, this is the uh, dreaded over-optimization panel that everyone's talking about for, in terms of backlinks. Let's say your uh, competitor wants to rank for Red Apple. And let's say that they have uh, you know, at least 15 to 25% uh, Red Apple, uh, that backlink pointed to them in their backlink profile. But not only this, they could have Red Apple in their URL and Red Apple in their title as well. This is a classic case of, uh, of, uh, of over-optimization. And uh, if they haven't been hit for that over-optimization penalty already, you can help them out by uh, sending you know, a couple hundred thousand links uh, to them uh, with, the, uh, with the keyword Red Apple. This will definitely uh, have the chance of pushing them over that threshold. And of course, you can also. This will help out when you uh, your paid link uh, submission report when you submit it. The next one I've never used personally. I've heard some people using it. You apparently you can point uh, porn links, child porn links, uh, herbal Viagra links, you know, uh, online casino kind of links to your customers. And if you can uh, confuse their semantic index, that is to say, what Google thinks the site is about by reading the pages and all the links pointed them. If you can make those links uh, say 60% of their link profile, then apparently you can cause them some kind of a trouble, some kind of a problem. The next one is buying excessive plus ones. Uh, especially if the site doesn't have very much traffic, then if you send it like 5,000 plus ones in a day, I guarantee that's going to ring some alarm bells for Google. The next one is a very common one. It's scraping the content and then the site gets a dupe content penalty. What that means is you use a program to read the text on their page and you publish that information on about a thousand different other blogs. And you make sure those blogs get indexed first. When you do that, it makes a, a duplicate content problem for that site and also brings them up for a panda review as well. This tactic and the spam link tactic of over-optimization uh, are used very well in conjunction. That's exactly the footprint that people are doing to themselves naturally that Google is penalizing on. And uh, th in fact, these are the two tactics that were used in that recent negative SEO case study. Uh, these tactics or tactics very much like this were used to bring those sites, uh, derank those sites for the queries they were trying to target. The next one is using uh, banned domains. What happens, you might ask, to all those domains that have been de-indexed uh, well, a lot of them are trying to resell those domains on GoDaddy, for example. So if you were to buy, say, 100 of these uh, uh, de-indexed, these banned domains, and 301 them to your competitor's site or various uh, uh, subsections of their site, uh, 
People have done this accidentally and caused themselves problems. This is a well-documented, well-known uh, uh, thing not to do. So I guarantee that it's going to have uh, some trouble for your competitor if uh, some are to do this to them. And by the way, all this works especially well if the site's new, uh, to say under nine months uh, of age. You might ask, well, why would I want to attack a site so young? Well, the question, uh, the, the answer is, um, it's like King of the Hill. Why would you want to let them get some strength first before knocking them down or get right beside you before knocking them down? The idea is if you have competitors coming up in your niche, you want to take care of them before they have enough strength to fight back. Brutal, but that's negative SEO. Okay, here's the rest of the tactics. So there's also these tactics here. Um, the, 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 these two ones work on the same kind of a principle. Uh, the first one is block. Uh, let's say, for example, hypothetically, you uh, get uh, IP addresses from all over the world, uh, aged Google accounts from all over the world, to go and block a certain site. Matt Cutts has already admitted that the block signal is being used in the Panda algorithm, so that will definitely cause them some kind of a trouble. And again, in theory, I imagine this would work better if you did it slowly and gradually over time. Uh, in trends in their traffic, for example, their traffic goes up, they get more blocks. Their traffic goes up, they get more blocks. Again, I'm, I'm guessing. The next one is the same kind of an idea. Uh, you would get eight uh, um, users from all over the world uh, through, I don't know, something like MTurk maybe or Odesk, I'm not sure. And uh, this uh, would affect their usage metrics by you go to the SERP, you would search the query, you click on the site, and you click back in about three to four seconds. And this is called bounce back to SERP. And it's a very common usage metric that is used by Google, that Google does track and uh, is rumored that is used in the, the Panda algorithm. And I know that Google is using the uh, usage metrics in some form of an algorithm because I can track those changes over time. I've been running an experiment for about the last three months. Uh, the data I intend to share with uh, the, uh, the group in, in a couple of videos. And uh, here's another good one uh, that's been around for a very long time. What you can do is you can find the backlinks that your competitor has that are great, that are very strong, powerful backlinks. Uh, these are the more white hat ones. And what you would do is you would email the owners of those sites and either, I don't know, pretend to be a lawyer, uh, fake some kind of DMCA request, uh, either ask nicely or inform them that the site's no longer up, they should switch the link or whatever. Somehow beg, cajole, coerce, enforce them to change that link or take that link down. And this, of course, will uh, harm the rankings of the competitor site. And last but not least, this is probably the most scummy of all the tactics, is you would do a DDoS to their server or one of their upstream routers. DDoS stands for Direct Denial of Service Attack, and it's the process, uh, process of sending tons of packets to a site to slow it down and or kill it. And in this instance, what you would do is you wouldn't kill the server or the router, you would send them just enough uh, packets over time that uh, their uh, server response times would, would, would go drastically down, again, periodically, randomly, over time. And I've seen this happen accidentally. I've seen sites that just through bad web design have a web page that takes in excess of 10 seconds to download, and I've seen their, their rankings go down slowly but surely as their, uh, as their uh, server speed was an issue. So if these are some of the tactics that people can use against you, what can you do to fight back against this? How can you protect yourself? Okay, so what are some of the things you can do to protect yourself against negative SEO? Well, it's actually pretty easy to sum up into one sentence. Don't be lazy. Essentially, the more healthy your site, the more qu higher quality your site, and the more quality you put in your SEO, the more you are presenting natural signals in your SEO, uh, the more, more, more robust your link portfolio, the uh, much harder it is for someone to target you with negative SEO. In particular, there's some of the specific things that you can do. One, don't over-optimize or use free link sites. Um, don't put your uh, money keywords both in the URL and in the title and in every single backlink that you send to yourself. That is going to shoot yourself in the foot. You don't even need anybody to help you out with that. That uh, over-optimization is already a problem. I have seen dozens of sites be affected by this. And apparently, Google is making it much, much worse as I speak right now, and the date is April 22nd or so. So uh, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, so don't do that. Next is a uh, house thing that I like to call backlink router. In another video, I've explained what that means. 
Uh, uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a tutorial on how to use Nuke, and I explain backlink routers a little bit better. Essentially what it is is a low disposable page, or even a 301 that you can use, to redirect the link juice to other parts of your site, and it's kind of like a, a, a router, right, in, in networking. And if you're ever getting bad signals coming through, you can remove the router and you surgically remove the, that link juice pointing to you. The next thing you can do is, is stay under the radar, especially if you're an affiliate. Don't put your affiliate code into the website until you're ready to make sales on the website. Um, so that way, uh, you're staying under the radar and any competitors won't see you as a threat until it's too late, until you're there. And then you're much stronger and you can handle those kinds of attacks better. The next is the dupe content problem. Make sure you use the rel canonical attribute in the link tag. You can also use rel author as well to get Google to know what content is yours. And the second that you put something up on your website, you're pinging all the uh, ping servers, you're indexing it through your copy of Nuke, whatever indexer that you use, and you're submitting your uh, website to Google uh, RFN right away, right? So that uh, anybody who's trying to use that tactic against you, it'll be much, much harder for them. That what you can do against the, uh, the social uh, negative SEO is try and get as many natural social signals as you can. Uh, try and get natural tweets, try to use pay with a tweet, try to get natural plus ones. And right now, I hate saying tactics that could in the future suddenly disappear and stop working. Faking natural signals will never stop working. Uh, but uh, using uh, social shares right now is working fairly well. Um, this, of course, this could go away in the future, but you can use social shares right now to try and social share plus ones, likes, those kinds of things. On this side of the board, uh, we have uh, to, to, to make sure you have the most healthy usage metrics possible, you should have the best designed site, the highest quality site, and use interesting media such as charts, graphs, pictures, infographics, and video. That keeps eyeballs on pages longer, and then your usage metrics are going to look much, much better. So if they want to attack you on usage metrics, you're already going to have very healthy usage metrics. And hey, more people will like your site, more people will convert. You'll rank better from trending traffic and uh, people will convert more. So it's a win-win, right? You, you should be doing this anyway, of course. Seven, uh, if you have some very powerful white hat backlinks from, uh, from uh, acquaintances online, here's an idea, keep in touch with them. Uh, you know, make sure that you keep those people in your pocket. You know, I'm not saying you have to be the best friends, but you know, keep in touch with them. So there's some douchebag emails them and says, oh, take down this link. You know, at least they, they'll email you back and get like, who is this guy? Why, why does he want me to take your link down? He says, you have child porn? What, what's going on? And you can even set up a Google alert so that it'll tell you that if these crucial links ever get taken down, you know it. And you can email them and beg to have it put back or explain the situation. And last but not least, have a fast page. Um, no one wants to sit there and wait for seconds for a page to download. And so it'll definitely hurt your conversions. It will definitely hurt your, the user experience. And it'll make you susceptible to negative SEO the, the, the slower your page is. So have a fast page and you're going to uh, be well ahead of the game. Essentially, the healthier your SEO and the, the more quality of your site, the harder it will be to hurt you. So I hope you enjoyed this session of Mastering Google on negative SEO and uh, good luck.